Welcome, 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 everybody. Preparing for glory. <laughs> I love that battle hymn, right? Make you feel excited, empowered, powerful, and you can do anything. Perfect. Today's topic is fear. fear. And also, well, we we'll we'll be discussing. We all, we all experience it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's part of the the natural progression of our evolution. So we're That's just going to so be touching base on that and seeing how we can leverage the technology to overcome fear. But also, let's see how we can empower one another. Right? Uh, Rachel, you know, I've started the process. It just my well, week got crazy, so I do apologize. I still have those things to get to you, so we will have that done this week. So. Richard and I are working on a chapter, so we're gonna once I we get everything start to move, we will be able to discuss it with the group. Uh, we're trying to build chapters into the book, um, a spiritual evolution. So everybody's, you know, if you're out there, you want to add a chapter to the book. This is our story. This is our collective story. Let us know, and we will write an extra chapter into the story, and we, we can share that story with the world and everybody else that's interested. So, Richard, I want to talk about fear. I think that's a famous saying, fear is an acronym, false evidence appearing real. What do you think about that? Oh, that's an interesting way to, to look at it, uh, break it down by the letters. Well, I can say this, that fear has had a profound impact on my life. Um, and when I am fearful, I have to be on my oxygen. There is no question about it. So the only way I can go off oxygen is when I... I'm confident and lacking fear. Um, and, you know, to be clear, I'm not totally, I'm not totally free of fear. Okay. So periodically throughout the day, I experience episodes of it. And when I do, I have to resort back to my oxygen. But what I'm finding is that's happening less frequently because I'm getting more confident. Like for instance, typically I only leave my house to go to medical appointments. It's the reason I drive a car. And um, typically when I, and I have a garage, it's attached to my house. Uh -huh. And to go from my house into my garage and get into my car is like 10 feet. It's all, that's, I don't have to go more than 10 feet. Yet prior to this, the fear would cause me, once I got into my car, it would take me like five to 10 minutes for me to be able to breathe normally enough to feel comfortable enough to back my car to my driveway. Now it takes me to 20, 20 or 30 seconds. That's it. Instead of five to 10 minutes is 20 or 30 seconds. And uh, the difference is the lack of fear. So I dreaded going up to get in my car because my experiences, I would just, I literally was out of breath. I literally was, Throwing myself back in the seat, gasping for breath. I don't do that anymore. I just walk out and get my car back out of my driveway. The Excellent. difference is the lack of fear. The difference is the lack of fear. That's what it is. I'm going to add Tony. I think Tony would like to join. Yeah. Blessings, Tony. I think you've been promoted to a panelist. Anybody else would like to join as a panelist? We're talking about something everybody's relatable, right? We're, we, we relate to it, but I think we can find a way to overcome and become empowered through it, by way of it, and not judge it. I think that the judgment is what we're learning to peel away, right? And, you know, Richard and I spoke uh, previously uh, with regards to um, he having a challenge week. We came, we found out it was fear, right? Fear was the corporate in the process of him being able to get to the next level so all the distortions that you guys have created over the years that you have stacked upon each other right fear uh, uh anger judgments prejudices all that stuff is stacked against you now when you begin to unravel because you want to awaken you are now shielded with all those distortions Remember, and it's not negative, it's distortion. Just like anything about frequency, if you understand frequency gets distorted, right? It's not good or bad or indifference, it's just distortion. So those distortions have capsulated you. You have to now learn to let it go so you can birth through it, right? And typically it's a metamorphosis. Uh, metamorphosis. You go through a metamorphosis in order to birth through it, just like a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. 
right? It requires inner strength, internal strength. And sometimes you feel by yourself. You feel like that butterfly in that dark cocoon feeling trapped. But the strength is, is what is within that manifests outward. So I want you guys, everyone out there to understand you have that capacity within, within you. But sometimes we limit that capacity because of distortion like fear or belief system and ideas that you have now uh, become attached to and learning to detach from those things. So this journey that we're on uh, is it, a profound journey because of self-discovery all over again. Right. It doesn't matter if you, you know 22 or 76 or 86 or 96. That's not matter. Self discovery can happen at any time. Right. And one of the one of the key for self discovery is it's a form of evolution, but it's a spiritual evolution and it's an energetic evolution as well. It allows you to evolve beyond the limitations and distortions that prevents you. If you are a collection of energy, that means the, your capability, your your potential is boundless. Or well, what restricts you, right? So let's look at some things that create fear, right? Uh, a lot of times when we are born, we start we start being taught the idea of fear. Don't do this, do that, don't do this. Rather than guiding us in our evolutionary journey and how to explore and understand causality, it's just black and white. Don't do this or else, right? And that begins to program us, right? And then somehow along the way, people begin to leverage fear on us, government, you know, um, schools, whether it's educational institutions, right? Whether it's uh, societal um, control factor, whatever those distortions are, begin to feed that fear in us, right? I call it, Richard, I call it a culture effect, right? So when you look at culture, you spell culture, the first four letters are cult, right? And so when we talk about this is my culture, your culture was founded in a cult. A cult is a control system that directs the path and your purpose, right? Whatever, whatever purpose you think you had internally, it has become it become limited to someone else's external purpose, right? Whether it's a purpose of the collective or a purpose of someone in a, in a position of authority. So you now becomes trapped into that position right what are your thoughts on that richard would you like to add anything to that thought well the only thing i would add is it happens without us realizing it okay like these powers over us we allow it to happen and don't even recognizing that we're doing that yeah 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 and, and that's and that's a sad thing i i think they're afraid they're afraid of what we can do when we go in collectively. See, no one can control the inner. Right? All religious religious texts, all spiritual understanding has always explored this idea that that which is within is greater than that which is within the world, right? So when you go in, you transform the world, right? But people want you to believe that there's nothing you do within because you're a ratchet nobody. And there is this idea of somebody that's going to be your liberator, your savior, and all these things and get you to get distracted. So that way they can tell you, well, since that liberator, right? And that's this is one of my favorite. Since that liberator, that savior is not here, why don't you look over here to this position? Because we got you covered. He's not here yet. So one of my favorites always the under the religious context, right? Religious, religion is a beautiful thing because it was supposed to teach us and guide us in how we build relationship with the higher source of ourselves, right? And God, that was the whole purpose of religion, right? But somehow it became what I call the pig mentality, right? Pride, ignorance, greed, that became actionable stupidity. The pride came in, they wanted control. They needed control. They wanted more resources. It was never enough. And a lot of times those people in position are typically dealing with inferiority complexes, right? They are not of the higher mind. They are not of clear thoughts. They are in a position of inferiority complexes as masking as a superiority complex towards you, right? And so a lot of the religious institutions started creating constructs. So when you look at cult, C-U-L-T, they built the cult 
they put it in you after a while because that environmental condition goes in you. Then it becomes a culture when you express it outward, right? So now we're collectively a culture of the cult that was in, instilling us. And we have to awaken to that. And we have tools now that we can do that. We can we can fight from within ourselves. We don't have to go out there and fight anybody. You don't have to go and attack your, your leadership team or your government or the police or whoever. Go inward and just shift. Shift to the reality. Remember, guys, collectively we are shifting. Just go in and shift to the reality that best serves you and leave the other stuff for those who want to perpetuate it. Right? You have eternity to do that. But that is not your joy. That is not your happiness. Let's find your joy and find your happiness and shift. And every one of you out there have the capacity to shift to find your greatest joy. Love is the path of least resistance. Love allows you to unravel some of those distortions. Love suffereth long. You've heard that. Love conquers all. You've heard all of that. Because love is the common denominator to everything. No matter who you meet on this planet, there's some level of understanding of love and connection. Love bridge connections faster than anything else. So when you go in and you find love and you allow love to be the, you know, the guiding light, the guiding force within you, then you begin to shift to the reality that you want. And I, I've experienced the distortion. Guys, <laughs> ladies, gentlemen, I've experienced some of the worst atrocities humanity has to offer. Being born in Africa, sleeping in trees. I've ate raw animals to survive. I've been homeless. I've been called mentally retarded. I've been, you know, picked on bully. You know, I've had one of the greatest atrocities. Richard, have I had a chance to share with the team my atrocity? Have I had a chance to share with everybody what happened to me? I don't know. If, uh, Tony, did I share my my experience with you guys? Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I have attempted to Okay. Okay. Today. All right. No, no worries. No worries. Well, I'm going to share my story with you guys. I'll share a brief story about my triumph, right? Um, I was born in West Africa and living in West Africa at a young age, I experienced, you know, we had civil war, we had ethnic cleansing, we had all these distortions happening, right? And I remember in Africa, I've ate raw animals to survive. I've slept in trees when I, you know, went, ran away and lived in the, in the jungle, in the forest, whatever just to exist in, that, in those moments. And me and my baby brother went through these atrocities. But something happened, right? One day the opportunity came where we were able to come to the United States. Right? After experiencing all these atrocities back home, we had this blessing because I remember as a child and I had the intention to always read that distortions. Sometimes you're birthed into darkness in order to experience the greater version of light of yourself. So being in Africa, I remember I used to sit sometimes on the tree and, and depending on the hills, and I would look to the sky and I would see plane driving, flying by. And I would say, One day I'm going to go to the heavens. And in my mind, going to America was going to the heavens. And I had this conviction I wanted to come to this country because I was perceiving this country was, was heaven. And um, we, we got an opportunity to come here when I was about 12 years old. So when I got here, you know, I began to experience this more distortion. So the things that I was experiencing in Africa didn't go away, right? It was still within me. The fear, the distortions, all that stuff was still within me. So even though I moved to another place, I'm still going to experience those distortions no matter where I go because it's within me. So to make a long story short, my brother and, and I, we both came here at a very young age. We, we experienced some of the similar atrocity. When I was about, I want to say 18, 19 years old, um, I think it was around 18, 19, I get a call and it said, your mother's dead, your grandmother's dead. And it was my brother. I said, get off my phone, stop playing. And I hung up on him. He said, and then he called me back. He said, no, grandma is there, mom is dead. And I said, get off my phone. I just had a long day. I was working for a publishing company at that time. I hung up the phone. And then my aunt called me and says, your grandmother's dead and your mother's fighting for her life. Right? And I didn't know what to do, how to respond to that. So I jumped in the car. I was in Maryland at that time, right in District Heights next to DC. I jumped in the car, driving 125. I mean, I was flat on the accelerator. Right? I had helicopters chasing me because they thought I was probably escaping something. 
the, the police had a blockage. They pulled me over and they said, what's wrong? Why, why are you speeding? I said, I have to get to Kansas City from Maryland. And I think my mother's fighting for her life and I need to be there. I get to Missouri and my mother, who my mother is mixed because my grandfather is from Switzerland. Right? Uh, my family originated in, Scot in Scotland. So my grandfather was white. And so my mother's very light complected. When I saw my mother, she was a dark as car where someone had broke into her home and suffocated my grandmother while she slept, stabbed my mother 15 times, seven times in her face, picked her up, threw her 12 flights of stairs, picked her up from there, threw her into the basement, another 12 flights of stairs, took out a switchblade and began to just stab her. She still wouldn't die. He put a rock in the socks and began to beat her with it severely. And then while she pretended to be dead, he took gasoline and torched the house around her. And so my mother recalled an, in, in a situation where she said she had to pretend for him to stop beating her with the rock in the socks. I need you all to imagine what type of distortion does it take for a human being to awaken to that type of anger. There's no judgment in the person who perpetrated the act, but what the understanding is what type of fear, anger, what built that up? And so I'm gonna take you on that journey so you can see that we don't just wake up in the morning fearful, we don't just wake up in the morning angry and aggressive. There are things we have to go through, there are cycles we have to go through and we have to develop ourselves into that. So this particular person, uh, pretend my, my mother pretended to be dead. He he actually went through the sliding door in the basement, and escaped. And my mother says when he realized that I wasn't dead, he started coming back, started running back towards the, I know towards the house. And she says she had to lay against the sliding door in her condition, bleeding and all the all that. Oh my! I'm trying to even visualize how horrific that was for her. She said she laid against the glass and put her body against it, and I was able to keep him till the siren, the police siren, the fire siren uh, uh, scared him away. Now, this is how the story twists and turns, right? So come to find out, it was my brother that did it. My brother woke up one day and had this anger. And I remember even at, the, at a young age, he will always say, I feel like there's a demon or something inside of me. Right? And it wasn't a demon. It was the fear and the anger that he, would, he was feeling inside himself. He wasn't allowing it to just go through him. Right? He wanted to control it, and then he wanted to use that and lash it back out to reflect it. One of the things he was missing is that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So when someone does something to you and you do something back to them, you did not solve the problem. You actually created a projection that needs to reflect back to you. So the question I was asking myself, what would it take for a human being to get to that level? Because we're all capable of it, right? The yin and the yang, we all have the potential for great darkness. We have the potential for great light is what we feed. So what, what was he feeding to get to that place where he could stab his own mother? And here was a here was the crazy part. He had no recollection of it, right? Because along the way, he created a personality that came in as a protective mechanism, him, right? So this distortion happened. I'm trying to understand. And I said, well, there's always a story behind the story. And I'm asking all of you to do that. When you have compassion for other people based on what they do, Ask yourself this question to help you deal with those situations. What is the story behind the story that led to the atrocity? Don't respond to the atrocity. We have a society that have a tendency to do that. Let's punish, but what are we really punishing? Do we look at the causality of the issues? So when my brother, what ended up happening, my, when I was talking to my brother, he said he had no recollection of it, but I remember him telling me stories of something that broke him. My brother has spent his whole life feeling unloved, just as I did when I was growing up in Africa. Can you imagine five, six, seven years old feeling unloved? We have 
millions of kids around the world growing up in an environment and condition, almost a building that is unloved. They feel unloved. They feel like they're a burden to society and society treat them as such. They're in the street bag. They're surviving. And these are just babies. And we can do something by going inside and say we want a better world. We have to stop reacting to the people out there that are controlling our society. So my brother and I went through this, but instead of him letting go, right, of this anger and this frustration of what happened to him, as I did, I had a practice letting it go. Well, he didn't. He wanted vengeful actions against everybody. And so I saw a letter from Showtime, which was one of the personality. Showtime was angry. I'm telling you, you should, you could read the anger from the letter. He, I want to burn the world to the ground because the world is full of evil people. No one seems to care. That was how Showtime was manifested. And I need you guys to understand you are so much more. There are different aspects of yourself, etheric aspects of yourself that can take over your body because it is it, these aspects of yourself is more animalistic, right? They're not, they're not as conscious as you might be at times, but sometimes we become animalistic as well. But these these entities that are part of us are animal, like they're like beasts, right? And they come out and they act out. And Showtime was one of those beasts that manifested to my brother. And he was angry. He was mad at the world. But can you blame Showtime? The world treating him like crap, spit it on him. He was in the street trying to survive at a very young age and he manifested that anger. But what triggered it was when my brother finally found a girl. I want you guys to visualize this. Of all the hatred and all the negativity and all this nonsense that happened to him in his life, he found a young lady that he felt was his light. You know, we all have had these experiences where we find someone and say, this is my light, and this person is helping me guide, to guide myself through these distortions. Well, so he met this girl who was excited. She was two years younger. He decided to go to the military. He got excited. You know, he got you know accepted into the Navy. Everything was going great for him. Remember, stackables, his whole entire life, all that anger was stackables. And those stackables came due. When those stackables come due, all the things that you have gathered in fear and hate and judgment and atrocity, when it comes due, it doesn't come due with the way you projected it. It comes due in the way you feel it, right? As they felt it when you released it out there. So Sam marries this girl. He gets on the boat, just got married. A week later, he's on the boat. He calls back to his home, and another man answered his phone and said, I'm having, I'm effing your girl, and all the money you're making is coming to me. I want you to try to imagine what happens to your mom. What did he feed himself for seven months on a ship when he felt like there's nothing I can do? And that's what depression sometimes is. When you go inward and feel hopeless, your body begins to shut down because you tell yourself there's nothing I can do. And you begin to go deep within and apply those pressure within yourself and you develop that depression mentality where your body begins to shut down because your body cannot synchronize with the nature of your mind at that level. Now you take your, your body frequency so low. So in this case, my brother's mind was so distorted in that, in that situation that it corrupted him physically that he had to be ripped apart. So my brother couldn't remember what happened. They found the evidence and they said, we're going to put him through a psychiatric evaluation. He goes through a psychiatric evaluation for two years and they came back and said, now you can stay in trial. This is one of the reasons I'm fighting out here with health and wellness in a constructive way, not a destructive way. So they sent my brother through psychiatric evaluation and said, now you took the drugs. Now you can stay in trial. They put him on trial. I think it was on a Monday. He went to trial on a Wednesday or something like that. And then he's found guilty. He's sentenced to jail. for He's sent to prison for 26 years. He had a heart attack and died two or three days later. Now, I have buried my grandmother previously. Now I had to go bury my baby brother. And my mother had to endure that. So here was what I had to tell my mother. 
I looked my mother in the eye and I told her, you brought this on you, mom. And she said, how is it possible? Can I cause this atrocity on me? How is this possible? I said, because you spend your entire life believing you are a victim. You always believe you were sick. You always believe that something is wrong with you. You always saw yourself not in a constructive way because someone made you believe that at a very early age. And you held on to that fear and to that distortion, to those ideas, and you fed it into your body. And then you acted out on so many people around you that this had to reflect on you. Yes, this is a horrible thing to say, but at the end of the day, if we don't take accountability of the things we reflect back, we cannot change, we cannot transform. Because it takes two points, where you are and where you're trying to get. You cannot deny where you are because you're lost. And if you're lost, you can never find where you're going. And that's what's happening to a lot of us, we're denying where we are. Embrace yourself unconditionally, accept the fear, accept all the distortions, embrace it, love it, accept it. Now, once you accept it, say, what can I do to shift from it? That's where we bring these technology into play. Let's leverage these technology because we need the help. Because we don't have the surrounding. Sometimes you turn on the news, everything's negative. Everybody around you is negative. You go to these technology and you say, let me send the, re the necessary vibration that allows me to shift. And that's what makes this 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 chi core technology or the frequency technology so powerful because Dave and others are always exploring possibilities of ways to transform every human being into a different perspective of themselves. So I'm sharing that story because my brother goes to that. By the way, my mother's still alive. I've used every resources within my repertoire of skills and ability to keep her alive. The only distortion she's manifesting is she, is, she looks like she's 13 months pregnant. She's had over 60 or 70 different major surgeries, but she's still here and she is still fighting. She has a lot of pain. I'm working on those distortions as well to eradicate that out of her body. And I think I'm on the break of finding something that is going to eradicate pain out of her body and actually regrow the, the, the nerves because all her muscle, everything, all the nerves have been damaged. I'm working on something, a little project I'm working on to regrow that and reinstill that healing back into her body. Why am I sharing this with you? Because I've been to it. I don't see darkness in that situation. I see light. Now, here's the amazing part, right? So one day I was meditating. This is what it gets exciting. Because just when you think you're in the darkest place, the light appears. I was meditating one, one day and I shifted. And when I shifted, my brother appeared to me, manifesting. He manifested to me. And he said, hey, Josie, do you want to play basketball? I said, I must be dreaming, right? He said, no, you're not dreaming. You have shifted your awareness into another realm. I said, you must be smoking something because oh, I must have been smoking something. And I don't smoke. But I don't know, somebody must have been smoking something and I sniffed it. I don't know what's going on, but I'm messed up right now, right? Because I'm tripping out because I don't smoke and I don't drink. But I'm tripping out, right? And I'm sorry. But this is not happening. But my body was vibrating. Literally, I could feel my body vibrate as if I'm there in a vibrational state. But what was messed, what, and I wasn't messed up, what I think allowed me to tilt a little bit more to move in the direction that I'm moving in was when he said, I came in to awaken you. I said, what does that mean? At that time, I was still asleep. He said, you needed to be shook up. He said, there was something that you needed to learn. You need to learn how to love unconditionally, including your enemy. So he said, I came in to play a part to be your enemy that you knew not to hate. You don't know how to hate me. And so you learn what it means to love someone that will commit this atrocity. See, sometimes we read scriptures and you see Jesus on the cross and he looks up and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You hear him, you get excited at church. Oh my God, forgive them, forgiveness. But it's easier said than done. So I had to go through this experience. But then something magical else happened because my thing was I was still lost in the idea of loss, death. And life, that will still bother me, right? He said, we're all eternal. We all perpetuate. We just shift based on what level 
information that we, che we choose to embrace. And then another brother came up to me and he said, hey, Josie. I said, who are you? He said, I'm your older brother. I said, no, you're not. He said, yes, I am. He said, go back and ask your mother about me. She had an abortion when she was pregnant with me. So I decided to come in and play that part for her. I came in for a season. That way she can experience that because she had a belief system that said having uh, being con conceiving a child while on your period will allow you to birth a witch into reality. So her distortion, and this is how this is what has taught me all this wisdom. We have so many distortions out here that we make it so real and we find that we are destroying somebody's life. That's what makes energy and life and love and all this stuff so exciting because we don't end. I'm telling you, you don't end. Stop fearing your end. There's no end for you. It's only another experience, right? Because when I met when I met my brother and he's telling me that he's my brother, he came in, he knew exactly when, what, what to do when he came in, what experience to connect with my mother and everything, and he left. So there is no end. And so all this anger we're holding in because we think atrocity is happening, let's put love in that and we can share because every human being that may have deanimated based on some level of distortion was still done through love. Love was always in control because they too are eternal and they will be forever. And they can come back and have that exact same experience if they wanted to again and evolve from it. I'm sharing that with you because when I awakened, I began to see, and it took, it took frequency, it took energy to allow me to neutralize the, the subjective perspective of myself. And I began to expand and I began to see that was so much more than this subjective perspective as you all are the same. Don't let no one take your, your ideas of you, your belief system, your love of self, and put it on a platform towards somebody else or something else that you have no connection to, you are just going through the motion. If you say you love something, you are willing to live for that thing rather than have to die for that thing. You are willing to love for that thing rather than have to hurt for that thing, right? Because love truly does conquer all. I'm sharing that with you because I know we have so much fear out here. We have fear of our sickness. Okay, the sickness will come but the sickness can easily go when you let it go. When we look at tools, like whether it's a gene or any other tool, it's a point of contact of intention. That's our intention that says, I'm going to use this instrument because my belief system, which is the developmental process of moving into knowing, says I need to use that. So therefore I'm gonna use that, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. If you believe in a tree, if you believe in your dog, if you believe in the love of anything, nature, connect to that, let that be a point of contact to allow you to find yourself and go within yourself. But be ready to embrace whatever outcome. Don't fear those things because they are false evidence appearing real. Just like reality, you are so much more, you are beautiful, you are amazing. There's, no one can describe who you are. You are perfect. I need all of you to understand that. All of you, your family, your kids, everybody, the people who get on your nerves, the people who you can't stand, heal from that. They are all perfect. They are all playing a role. Like my brother came into this world to play a role as an antagonist. Now, some of you might sit there and say, oh, that's kind of heavy to take. We watch movies all the time. They're, Richard, can you imagine watching a movie, everybody's the protagonist? There is no antagonist. What kind of fun the movie will be? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just watch everybody hero just flying. Everybody just happy. You're like, okay, where is the bad guy, right? Sometimes we want to cheer for the bad guy, right? <laughs> Every now and then we want to see the bad guy challenge the hero. It's not a bad thing. You know, sometimes someone will come into your life. Sometimes it's the people closest to you. Sometimes it's your kids. Sometimes it's your spouse. Sometimes it's strangers. Someone will come into your life to test your faith. Right? Because your faith needs to be tested in order for you to be trusted to share it. I'm going to say that again. Your faith needs to be tested in order for you to be trusted to share. Because when your faith is tested, 
That is you saying, I'm ready to let this go in love. And then you shift because you'll let it go in love. Not let it go in fear, anger, because all you're doing is moving yourself to another reality to see how can you experience that same situation in a different way. So I know I've been rambling. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to pause. And if anybody have questions out there, please shoot. Today we're talking about fear. And, you know, for me, that has healed me a lot because I used to be terrified of death. Oh, my God, I was petrified of death. Cancer. I used to be terrified of cancer. Cancer to me, for me, is like, it's less harmful and less uh, fearful than common cold. But it's actually less harmful and fearful than having a dirty shirt. I have no fear of cancer. I had a goal to, I have no fear of dis diseases anymore. It happens, it happens. I have no fear of anything having control over me. So when doctors come to me or talk to someone, because I have people that come to me all the time, my doctor said, I'm going to die. I said, so? You're shifting. They said, well, what does that mean? I don't want to die. I, well, th that which you resist will persist. Embrace it. And the people who embrace you are still here. The people who are oh my God, I want to die. And that fear consumes them. They go in there, they get caught up with the doctors and the fear. They're no longer here to deanimate. And I have to love them where they are because that was the choice they made. There's no judgment because they are so much more than that circumstance and that situation. All of you are so much more than that. You're beautiful, fathomless. Oh my God, you only knew what is in you. If you only, if you only wake up to what is in you, Right? And that's why we use this device. We use this device to help awaken you so you begin to identify who you are in the greatness of all things. God, this God cannot exist without you. Because if the idea of God is all that is and all that is not, you are part of the existence within it. So for you to not exist means God cannot exist because you are within this nature of what we call God. So you are worthy to be here. You are worthy to be eternal. You are worthy to experience all the reality that best serves you. I'm asking you guys to fight. Fight through that in a constructive, positive way. But let that fight be eternal with love and compassion. Give yourself grace. Give yourself love. Give yourself, what feed yourself. And then when you start to do that, you begin to change your vibration. And then you begin to resonate. And you begin to send a signal out there of other people that need to come and connect with you. So you send the signal that says, I'm here and I'm loving and I'm amazing and I'm awesome. Can you come and reflect that back to me so I can see it? Rather than, I hate the world. Y'all going to all burn in hell. I don't care. Come and show me that too. You have the power to determine that. I do simple things. I run the chi core frequency. I run, you know, whenever I feel distorted, I run calm. I start with calm. I need to calm down because when I calm, I'm more objective, right? Then I go into the meditative state. See, when you're calm, you're zeroing out on yourself. You're calming down, right? You're coming from the emotional height because emotional feel and perpetuate the distortion. So you calm down and now you become centered, right? Once you become centered, it doesn't mean you're not attacked. You're still being attacked, right? Thoughts are still coming in. That's why you want to go into the meditative state. You want to understand what it means to be in a meditative state. So I would shift to the meditative state. Meditative state allows you to be neutral. That's the whole purpose. To observe without the attachment. So you allow the thoughts to come and go. You run that frequency that allows you to be in that meditative state. Now, once you get to that place, even if it's for a few hours and you can feel it, then run the abundance. Run the abundance because you want to feel that. And if that requires you to have manifestation of wealth, it will come to pass without you doing nothing. So normally when you start running those abundance, feed it with love. So run those love frequency because you know love intertwines into everything. You want more money? Don't go after money. You get distracted. Go through love and let love hold the money towards you. Because love doesn't bring the money. Love brings the end result of that money. And if you're looking for that money, you'll always be chasing that money and you will never be happy in your life and you'll still be miserable. 
But if you allow love to be the answer and guide you, and you run those love frequencies because you're calm, you're balanced, and you run those love frequencies, then you'll begin to see manifestation of those things. And the way it come, the way it comes to you, it will be beyond your imagination. Sometimes you'll be you. You ask yourself, "I'm just trying to figure out how this is possible." I'll give you guys a quick testimony. Right, I just started working for a school this year. I don't know why I'm at this school. I've been asking myself, why am I going back into the classroom? So I go into the classroom and two days later, my co-teacher, the other teacher next door comes to me and he brings a little device. He said, I want to tell you about a little device. He was excited. I said, what you like to tell me about? He said, have you heard of cheat coil? And he pulls out the cheat coin nano, right? <laughs> and he shows me the cheat coin. I said, are you kidding me? He said, man, I'm trying to figure out a little bit about this technology. I said, why are you asking me? He said, I don't know. I was joking, of course, right? And so he points it out and he is, he's, like, he's like, man, I heard so much stuff about this stuff. And he got the little small mini one, but he was excited about it. I said, do you know what to do with it? He said, yeah, I just, I just touch it and I just listen to it. But he was still lost with it. Right. So I started training him and now he's on this high. <laughs> right? So he's going to get the brain tab. He's going to get the other frequency. He is on a high now because he realized because he was asking me, he says, I noticed you know how to zero yourself out when distortions around you. And what do you do? I told him I, I, sh I run the frequency. I said, sometimes I run it at home when I'm asleep or something. I run it around me when I'm when I'm around other people. And I try to keep that close by because. I get bombarded and I need support. I need my I need my my support team around me. And this these frequency is sending love, my love team around me and is sending my my calm, my balance, all these different excitement. I have like trillions and infinite resources now at my disposal, all coming to me to support me in navigating through this distortion. So now I realize sometimes the thing that we resist has a purpose to it. So when I ask him, I say, you know, I wasn't meant to be here. He said, yes, you were. you were. You were meant to come here for me because I had the intention of finding somebody to help me. I said, why it had to be me though? Why did not it be some, somebody else, right? Because now I got to come here and deal with the stress of all the kids and stuff. But I love my kids, right? I love what I do because I love inspiring greatness in kids and, and having them see a potential they haven't seen before. That is that is my place. When I'm there and I'm in front of kids and I and I start to speak into their soul and I start to speak into their purpose and and get them to realize that their greatness destined for great things. There's nothing like it. So for me, it is not work. It's a purpose, right? Yes, all the other fluffs around it can get agitated, but I try to narrow my focus on that piece and just pour more into these kids and realize that. If you never heard the word, I love you, you will hear from me every day. If you've never been called amazing, you will hear from me every day because you are that. So exactly as I talk to you all, I talk to them. They have me full time every day, you know, and they, they always they always laugh. They say, Mr. G, do you always just motivate? Can you like, do you come one day and I motivate? Then I say, I wouldn't be me if I just came one day and I motivate. Right? So I appreciate all of you guys. We all have the fear, and we all walk in sometimes. In the fear, but learn to leverage these tools, right? You know, go online. David have a lot of explanations of these tools. And find out what resonate with you. It's just like crystal, right? Sometimes when you go to a crystal store, I don't know if anybody has put this crystal. It tell you find the crystal or connect with the crystal that resonate with you. I was confused when I first heard it crystal store i was wanting them to pick the crystal i said i saw that one it looks pretty it said does it resonate i said what does that mean that was before before the new me right or the old me right i was like i don't know it just looked pretty they said well that's not the purpose of it the purpose is it's a connection it's a lie i said no it's not it's it's just a little piece of jewelry they said no you connect to it and i've experienced crystal in a whole different ways i've seen crystal do things that will blow your mind and I, I actually had a chance to tap into other aspects of myself with crystal energy transforming the world, but also destructive to destroy the world. So those are powerful expressions of creation. So everything that you guys are doing, you're doing right, but just follow the path of love, balance, 
joy, happiness. Find those tools. We, we, we have a frequency. There's happy frequency. Don't chase the money, people. I know we all have out here chasing the money. Don't chase the money. All right? Because if you're chasing the money, you're chasing also debt with the money. Stop chasing the money. Chase the money, what you want the money to bring for you or bring to you. If you believe the money is going to bring you joy and happiness, chase the joy and happiness and let creation use the path of least resistance to bring it to you. Oh my God, it is so amazing when synchronicity hits and, you, and you're looking around like, how is this possible? Richard knows we we, 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 we sometimes we bounce off each other. Synchronicity, when a universe takes over and a universe can fire on your behalf because you are an expression. Looking back at yourself, right? I said this last week. Your internal, your internal creative force is what reflect outside of your external creative form. The creator out here is you. The creator inside, when you go into your into your thoughts, when you go into your memory, that is not a memory, that's a creation. You go in and you create, and you practice creating there. And that vibration of creation that you manifest internally is what you out here listen to and pay attention to and create it out here for you. It is you internal and it is you external. Stop looking external to make things happen. Hey, God, can you make this happen? It can't because God is going to say, what did you create today? Well, I create misery, pain, frustration. I saw this, this healing that cut me off on the highway. I saw, I can't believe I saw it. I can't believe he wore that outfit today looking like a Oh, oh my God, what was wrong with them, right? And you have all these judgment in creation going internal. I can't believe, why would she do that? Why would she take that, right? And you, you get all emotional, you're attaching those emotions to it. Oh, he looks a little bit like something is wrong with him, right? And, you, and you're having that thought, what is wrong with him? What is wrong with my son? What is wrong with my daughter? Is something wrong with them? I think there's something wrong with them. And you're having all these conversations, but it's not conversation. It is creation. It is creation in practice internally. Then the outside says, let's manifest it. You begin to manifest it, and then you wonder what. Just like my mother. Yes, it was sad. Yes, it was an atrocity. But if you know the story behind the story, from a very young age, my mother always believed she was a sickly person from the time she was a baby. They made her believe that she was a sickly person and she is 60s and she's always been sickly. Even when the best moment of opportunity presented themselves, she still had to manifest that creation because she saw herself as a sickly human being. Stop speaking, stop creating those things in you. And if you're struggling with that, find tools. Find people. Thank you for coming and joining us as a family. This is where we're going to talk about it. That's why I want you guys to jump in. Let's talk about it. There's no judgment. Mr. Gino, today I was pissed off. I felt like I was pissed on. There's nothing. There's no judgment in there. Just come and be you. There's no judgment here. This is love because through love, you will find the path of least resistance. But don't go in and create more. Start learning to neutralize those distortion. See your son, see your daughter, see your family members, see those people that you cannot stand in a different way. You have the power to do that. I challenge you. Imagine the most horrific person in the world, right? Like, for example, I was meditating one day and I connected with Adolphus, right? We called him Hitler. Loving dude. It was, he is a loving dude that got lost. Amazing. He's a human being. He just got lost. He got lost in the external. He got angry. And he manifested that anger because he got lost in history. He was a very educated man. And he got lost in the distortions out here. And he began to reflect it. And we're judging him. And then we're putting that inside ourselves. Let it go. Right? Let it go. Let those people go. Detach from those distortions and find creative ways to make yourself. All right. So I appreciate it. I'm, I'm going to pause again. I know I keep going, but Tony, anybody else would like to add anything? Tony, what do you think? What are your thoughts? 
you know, I lost you for a minute there. Uh, but, you know, everything you're saying, I, you know, I totally agree with. Uh, can you hear me? First yes, I can hear you, sir. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, that, uh, you know, fear, that is one of the, I think one of the greatest detriments we all face, you know, is, is fear of many things. And uh, I know for me personally, it was very liberating to, to be able to get beyond the fear, you know, just the fear of death first and foremost, you, you get beyond that. And, and then all the other fears just really, you know, fade away as insignificant. And it's really empowering when you get to that point of not fearing anything anymore. I mean, you know, to say you don't fear anything, I mean, might be a little uh, generalizing, but, you know, there's very little that I fear now um, myself. I mean, my fears are based around my family and things that, you know, that uh, they're going through that I'm not able to, you know, be a part of, you know, those kinds of fears. But anyway, I really, I, I hear what you're saying. And, you know, and, you know, many years ago, my wife said to me, um, you know, where, where the mind goes, the energy flows. And so, you know, and, and, and I've had a lot of, a lot of uh, experience around that, you know, trying to, trying to change your thought process um, because, you know, the, the whole idea of manifesting and, you know, bringing good things to you rather than focusing on all the negatives. And we all have negative, like stuff, right? You know, I mean, when I, I, and I counsel people about this a lot, then, you know, we all, all are going to have the stuff. I mean, life is stuff. Uh, the only real control we have over it is how we react to it. You know? and, and so I try to put that into everyday practice. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a work in progress. <laughs> um, but, but anyway, I, I think that, um, you know, everything that you've been saying here is great and, you know, and, and, and resonated with me. Uh, I think one of the things being here and at this webinar is, is I'm really, I, I bought the cheap coil Mac system and, and I've been using it, but I've been sort of, you know, stumbling through it because there's, I haven't really been able to find any kind of clear direction on how to proceed. So I've been kind of by trial and error. Um, and, uh, and I just learned about the, you know, <laughs> using the, uh, like calm or soothe uh, programs as, and then the other things you have. <laughs> I have several friends that um, I'm experimenting on uh, that uh, to try and, you know, uh, get this. Um, we, we have a wellness center where we're opening and this is going to be one of the modalities that we offer in that wellness center. Uh, but, but more than that, it's something that my wife and I right now are, I, I use frequencies every day. It's only been about a month. Uh, but I tell you, um, I'm excited about the possibilities. Uh, right now, I have been struggling with, we both have struggled with a lot of detoxification. Uh, and so, um, you know, I'm looking forward to get, getting beyond that uh, and, and being able to really achieve new heights with, in term, with using the frequency and being able to share that with others. Uh, right now, friends and family, uh, and I've got a I've got a, a gal, a, a friend of mine who has had stage four uh, acute myeloid leukemia for a couple of years now, and it's amazing that she's still alive. Um, but she, I I just started to utilize. Uh, we're doing a, a remote session with her every day. Today was really the first official one I did for her. Um, I'm waiting to get some of her DNA. So that I can really, um, you know, make sure that I'm I'm getting this energy to her, um, and that's another thing I'm I'm curious about. You know, if any, if others are utilizing these systems in that way, I also have questions about coils and 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 I have the, with the max coils. I mean, I have them set up actually, uh, and I'm using them, and 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 on either side of myself or whoever. Uh, and then because I one of the things that I'm uh, a big fan of and have been researching for many years is scalar energy. And 
by this system that the way I'm using it, I, I know that I, I believe that that scalar, I know that's one of the energies that you're benefiting from with this system. Uh, but the setup that I came up with, I think is enhancing that. Um, the magnets, using the magnets. Uh, so just kind of doing a lot of uh, just sort of just feeling right now, you know? Um, and uh, so that's so that's basically for me um, what, what I'm what I'm doing and 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 what I'm looking for in terms of sorry about that in terms of being a part of these webinars. It's been a little tough. We have the internet that is challenging to say say the least. Um, so that's made it a you know a little tough. Um, but uh, but anyway, I, I look forward to taking part in this. And you know, and, and my request would just be that that. If and maybe this isn't the right form for that, maybe there's something else I just haven't discovered yet. Um, and, but I've, I've looked at a lot of the videos that um, Master Wong has created, and and uh, and while informative, there's not really I haven't found the sort of step by step, and you know, and maybe that's the point. Maybe maybe that doesn't exist, and it's not supposed to because you've got to sort of stumble through this and figure it and, you know, and learn along the way. Uh, so that's kind of where, where I'm at with it, but I'm really eager to, to move forward and, and become more well-versed at this and to benefit from these frequencies. I, you know, I, I already have corrected. I, I mean, I, I dove right in and, and I've, I've got a couple of minor health issues that I wanted to try and address and I'm having success with that. Um, my sleep is just the past few nights finally started to improve dramatically. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. Um, that's you know who who I am, what what I'm, how I'm utilizing the system thus far. Thank you, thank you, Tony. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, so yeah, to to simplify, Tony, one of the things I want to be careful of is not create a one dimensional system about this technology, right? Because a lot of times we come and say, give me a cookie cutter system to follow. That is not how this technology is supposed to be meant to do, right? Leverage. Yeah, you know, David has an amazing way of giving the technical. I don't focus on the technical, I focus on the holistic, right? So you have to ask yourself, what is your purpose, right? So if your purpose is to support others, if your purpose is to support your health, you know, also be careful. When you go out there searching to support others, that means you have to experience the distortions in order to understand deeply what they're going through, right? Especially when you awaken. To whom much is called, uh, it says, to whom much is given, much is required, right? And so a lot has been given to you because now you're awaken. So when you see somebody with cancer, understand that when you connect with that person, there's an internal nature that you are connecting to as well within yourself. So I would say, first and foremost, make sure you are balanced and you're not attaching, you're detaching from uh, the people that you're supporting. But the tools are meant to be like going to Walmart, right? If you went to Walmart Target, you're going to Walmart Target for a purpose, right, Tony? You're not going to Walmart and say, let me just pick everything off the shelf and take it home, right? Even if you have all the money in the world, it will not be conducive for you, right? Because you have to go specifically what your needs are. So with the cheek oil, I think instinctively you're doing everything right. You take the core, you have, you follow the instruction on how to set them up, and you run the frequency. The key thing is what intention are you putting towards the frequency? What intention are you putting towards what frequency you want to run? It? What is the reason? So a lot of times people get this technology with with a quick fix. They want a quick fix to solve a distortion like health issue right health issue is a manifestation based on a deeper internal nature of something happening a distortion now here's the thing i need everybody to understand your health is not just on your body right there's three purpose by which your health is impacted there is the soul the mind and the body okay and sometimes you can try everything under the sun to try to heal something on the body when it's a purpose of the mind. And you can try everything to heal with the body and the mind when it's a purpose of the soul. When we talk about karma, all those things, those are the different purpose. What you have to do is embrace and accept the situation. By accepting is the path of least resistance to let go. I need everybody to understand when you accept, it's easier to let go. Detachment is the key because as long as you attach that I am, listen to yourself. You say, 
I am sick. I, I have cancer. You are speaking that into your creative force. Remember, you are infinite. The technology is just a conduit to allow you to have the system and the tools around you that allows you to make a deeper connection to the things that you're trying to achieve. So when you look at it for health and wellness, I love the fact that you want to start a wellness center. It's something that's always been on my heart as well. Uh, but again, I had to ask myself, who am I trying to heal, right? When the healing begins and ends with the person. So the wellness centers that you know that I, I, I envision is one that inspires people, right? And you also talk about, you know, long distance healing. Right? When you start dealing on the quantum level, you can he you're connecting with everything, right? It's the infinite, right? So all those things that you're doing is you're instinctively doing it right, but I need you to let go of control, okay? And allow your inner self, your instinct to follow, right? And if you do that, it will flow more efficiently and you will start to see synchronicity. You'll begin to do things that will blow your mind because you will now be in tune. But pay attention to what you're creating. So if somebody come with cancer and they're sick and you're going in and you're reflecting about that cancer and that sickness of that person and you're like, I feel so sad this person is going through that. I wish I could do something more. I wish I know this is gonna help. And you just that's distortion. That's a distortion of creation that needs to manifest. So again, make sure that you you understand how to clear yourself out uh from those situations. Allow yourself to be open to allow the universe because i promise you tony when you open up sometimes a child in the street will come to you and give you the answer because everything outside of you your dog will come to you and give you the answer i promise you that everything around you people placing and things have the potential to come and give you the answer when you are not tied into an ideal belief system or distorted subjective perspective so i ask all of you to be open to be free to allow your creative self to manifest however way it deemed necessary to bring that and to help you heal. You know, sometimes somebody might be out there and says, I just don't feel love, right? And you, you're trying to look for a man. You're trying to look for a woman. Oh, I need me a girl. I need me a woman. She got to be this. She got to be that. Sometimes creation will give you a dog. Sit your happy self down and, and, and play with the dog. Just play with the dog. Just have, just love the dog. Don't, Stop trying to find a man or a woman. Just love the dog because right now it's just to teach you to love. <laughs> and you're walking around talking about, oh, this is my baby, this is my baby. Then you're like, I still need a man. No. When you love that dog unconditionally, you love that dog, love that person or that thing that, that the, the universe, whatever you want to call it, brings to you, then it overflows. Then you, be, you begin to resonate, right? You begin to pull the attraction of the person that best serves you. So stop walking around thinking it's you, it's not you, there's nothing wrong with you, you're perfect, right? All, all you beautiful women out there, you're perfect. All you amazing men out there, you guys are perfect, you know? And you're not broke, busted, and disgusted either. Either You just operate in lack. It's a lacking mentality. And we need to learn to let go. And you, you mentioned something, Tony, about your family, right? Let go of your family too, because they don't belong to you. They're part of your support system, but they are a creative force themselves. The goal is to inspire them and let them be free to have their experience without the control or trying to control their outcome or what they need to do. Learn to let them go and let them have that experience because you know they're perfect. You know that they can achieve anything and allow them to achieve their purpose. Sometimes that purpose might come by way of resistance and you, we have to sit on the sidelines. I will share this last story in closing. I've seen it firsthand. I've seen it multiple times, but it never spoke loudly than this situation. There was a young lady that, that had stage four cancer and she had full blown AIDS. And she was in Louisiana and they told her, the doctor told her she was in hospital. She had, I think seven days. And I got a call and it says, can you help LaDon? I said, sure, All right, I can, I'll, I'll do my best, All right? And they said, well, can you go to Louisiana? I said, I'm not going to Louisiana. That's a long way, right? Can she come here? Oh, she's not going to be able to make the trip. So I said, I'm going to just give her some baking soda, put some baking soda in water and just give it to her. And that would help at least get her enough. So she got here and I met her and she was laying in the bed. And I said, congratulations to your healing. And she looked at me like I was weird because she couldn't move. She was confined to the bed. 
I remember the nurse was going on vacation at that time. So I said, congratulations. She just nodded her head. Right? And we began to detoxify her body. Uh, and she, all that nonsense, all that tox, toxic stuff just came out. And when she recovered, she recovered from both AIDS and cancer, right? Cancer is a distortion. AIDS is a distortion. She recovered from both. Now, I'm not making claims of curing anything because there's nothing to cure, right? You give the body the love that it needs, the body will, will reflect that right? externally. And I'm saying that to everybody. I'm saying that to the FDA, the, F, the FCC, all the F people out there. I'm saying it to y'all. If you give the body the necessary love, the body will respond to kind. There's no, there's nothing that they can say about that. They all know that that's true, right? So at the end of the day, they don't want us talking about something curing something, something because there's nothing to cure. It's just giving the body what the body needs to align, right? So some people choose not to do that because they're capitalists. Other people choose to do that because they're more compassionate and loving. Right? So one of the things I I noticed about Ladonna, Ladonna was codependent, or her mother always rescuing her. She had achieved this distortion when she was out in the streets. She wanted to be grown really early in, in age. And she this was the manifestation of those resistance. And there's no judgment. And I remember when she got better and recovered from both. See, that which you resist will persist, right? You know, you have to understand and accept and love yourself. And it was hard for LaDonna to love herself because she was trying so hard to impress upon what others, how others were seeing her. And I said, LaDonna, you need to sit your little happy self somewhere and just be happy with yourself. And it was hard. And for me at that time, I wasn't fully in awareness of the aspect of the quantum, right? That was before David and, and all this technology. So I just knew the natural external. And then I knew how to conversate with people based on what was inside of me. So LaDonna recovered and then she went back into the streets again because the streets was calling her. She said, my friends are in the street. I want to go back to the street. And then she got sick while she was in the streets again, and the mom came to the rescue. And I looked at her, I said, Ladon, one day, creation is going to keep your mother away from helping you. And there's nothing, as badly as she wants to help you, she will not be able to help you. I said, I need you to stop and, and think about your actions and just find centeredness within yourself. And she said, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, Mr. G, okay, Mr. G. And she went back, she was grown, she was in her thirties and she was grown. I can't force her to do whatever, I can only advise her. She goes back again into the streets again because friends were in the streets. She wanted to impress upon those friends. And while she was in the streets, uh, this time she got sick again, okay? But now her mother and I had not talked, cause it was over two years now, her mother and I, you know, life happens, We my, my phone number changed and different things happen. And when I find out later, it says LaDonna passed away. And I said, from what? From starvation. I said, excuse me? LaDonna got depressed because one day she went into the streets and she was the friends that kept pulling her back, one of them ended up dying. And sometimes that friend is a sacrifice for you to awaken. Sometimes it's a sacrifice not for her to awaken, but other people who know of her story to awaken. Maybe it's some of you out there. LaDonna friends overdosed on drugs. LaDonna got depressed and stopped eating. She beat cancer, she beat AIDS, and she died from a mental state, a mental distortion. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes the purpose of the mind, and then sometimes the purpose of the body. Now, why was the mother not able to help her at that time? Because around the same time that LaDonna desperately needed the mother, the mother was dealing with another tragic situation where our son was involved in a situation where he accidentally shot his wife and it was a whole thing and his mother had to give that all her attention. I need you to understand the things that you think are there are going to be there all the time. And, and it's, I talk about that in Kyle's story about the you know the, the little flowing river and stuff like people get, become codependent of it on, on, on the, the creek and the, the lake, whatever it is that flowing your substance to you. Sometimes it ends. It ends because you haven't self-regulated, you haven't understand, you haven't understood that this is all about you. Right? And so all the things that LaDonna was codependent on was no longer there and she couldn't exist on her own. So that has inspired me to say, we need to target the mind. Forget the physical. The mind, if we can, if we can target through the mind, to the essence of our higher selves and to the essence of our beingness, we can transform through everything. So that pushed me because... We can heal the body, 
but if the mind is weak and the mind is distorted, you, you're still lost. So this technology, David made it all inclusive. So what I would say, put your intention forward, run the love frequency and send a signal to your daughters or family member, or whoever and said, protect them, no matter where they are, just leave it. Know that whatever happens to them is what is best for them because again, they are eternal, they're absolute, they're beautiful, perfect. That's the way they are, and they are here to express an aspect of yourself. They are reflecting an aspect of yourself. Can I, inter can I interrupt you for a minute? Yes. You just said run the love frequency and send that to your daughter. Were, were you referring to the gal, the mother? Yeah, I would just say in general, yeah, just run the, yeah, you know, I'll say in general, family members, just run the love frequency and then send that intention forward because that's how it goes forward to your family. You don't need, you don't need to control. You don't need to have control over it. And that's sometimes we forget that because we want to control people, places, and things. And we cannot be in every, we cannot be everywhere on the physical level. So we go to the higher level and allow ourselves to move the intention in our creative force. I don't know if I answered that question for you. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that hit me because that that is very relevant for, yeah. for me. I, my daughter is, uh, that's, that, that is probably the greatest challenge that, uh, fixing, well, not fixing, trying to, yes. you know, being positive about, you know, about, yeah. about changes that, that I hope she, she makes. You know, and, so can I say something to me? Love all the time. Yeah. yeah, I say, Tony, I'm going to say this and this, I'm going to say it in a loving way, right? Your daughter is who she is because of who you are as it relates to her. You got to ask yourself, that the question is not what my daughter needs to do to change. The question is, what do I need to do to change inside so I don't reflect that? That is the question. We're not asking a question inside. We're asking it, we're looking outside. It's like looking at the mirror and says, hey, I need you to smile so I can smile out here. How long is it going to take while staring at that mirror, Tony, before you start smiling? <laughs> You're going to be staring at that mirror forever, and that mirror is never going to smile at you first. You have to go inside first. And what you feed inside is what it's going to reflect outside. So I'm asking all of you to do the same thing. You are that amazing. Stop trying to reach out there because out there is just an illusion. It begins inside your mind inside your thought, inside your creative force. There's no memory. Everybody, there's no memory. It's only creation. Go inside, change that creation. See your daughter differently. Whatever you think your daughter is, go inside and change her up. And I promise you she would change outside of this. Giving the season and allowing that to be truth for you. That is the way you change because she is reflecting either fear or distortion in anything else else. Yeah, I mean, it's. I hear what you're saying. Uh, there is, you know, I know, and we're connected on, you know, on levels that you know may not be a physical connection. You know, she's she's thousands of miles away, and I haven't spoken with her for a couple of years now. Um, so, so I so I, I hear what you're saying, and that's a, and that is something that I have uh, had come to terms with. You know that that my I really don't have an expectation, you know, with when it when it comes to her um, at this point. Not to say I haven't in the past, and I realize that, you know, I, I, what you said about the mirror reflecting. You know, I, I get that, and uh, but thank you for that reminder. You, you uh, absolutely, you absolutely. So, and I and I said I know we are running out of time, and, and I had someone we had a conversation, a similar conversation, and they got really livid at me. And they said, why would you say something like that? Why would I reflect that? So I asked them a simple question. I said, take me back to your childhood. They said, why? I said, just take me back there. Okay? Because I want you to take me back to your creation of your childhood. So they go back in and start thinking. I said, how are the relationship with you and your mother? Oh, I can't stand her. She gets on my nerve. Can you believe some of the things that she was doing to me? She was mean. She was evil. I said, congratulations. Your daughter's reflecting that to you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And, and there... No matter, they started laughing, right? Because it was funny because those are stackables. Those stackables will come due. So a lot of times you think you didn't create it. I promise you, you did. Nothing escapes your reflection unless you center yourself and learn to let it go. You don't have to accept karma. Karma doesn't have to be balanced. 
You just have to identify you the creation. You don't want to experience it anymore. That's it. And if you zero yourself out, karma gets zero out too. So we never get zero out because we're always charged. And we're always charged. We're always reflecting. That's what creating the stackable because we're off balance. Like a number line. Negative 25, positive 25. Negative 26, positive 20. We can, when you get to zero, there is no reflection. When you get to zero, then you're able to perceive your creation. Right? So I'm asking all of you to go inside. Practice inside. Use the technology. Use the love frequency because the love intertwines into everything. Run those love, run those joy, run those happiness, run those. Get into that state of abundance and happiness. I'm sorry, the happiness before you run the abundance. The money will come. You can bring the money frequency because I know your mind is still, sometimes our mind gets warped. I need the money, I need the money, I need the money, I need the money, so I need to do this. Don't allow that to distract you because then you attach out here rather than going inward to create. I need to get healthy. I need I need this disease gone. You attach out here rather than going inward to create. So let go of the out here, go inward and start to see yourself differently. Start to see your finances differently. Start to see the relationship differently. Start to see the things that you believe is difficult out here differently inside and come back and call me a liar. See if it doesn't change. And it will freak you out when it starts changing. Your daughter will pick up the phone and just call you and say, Dad, I was thinking about you. Like, excuse me, who is this again? <laughs> and, and it's just craziness when it happens, right? It's happening to me all the time. It's hap it, it happened to me more frequently now. People will call me. I will be thinking about somebody, and I will go in, and this person used to get on my nerve. And this person will call me, hey, hey, Mr. G, I was just thinking about you. I think you, you're amazing. I said, I'm sorry, who are you talking to? They're like, you. And then we laugh about it. I said, but you never liked me. I know, but I, I don't know. There's something about you now. I said, ah, that's going inside, right? I went inside because I got tired dealing with you out here. <laughs> so stop dealing with this nonsense out here, people. Stop dealing with the problems out here. Go inward and change those problems. Look at your son. Look at your daughter. Look at your wife. Look at your spouse. Look at your husband. Look at your parents. Look at the world differently. And the world around you will change because you are the creator. I love you guys. Richard, I would like you to close us out. Is there anything you'd like to add before I close us out? The only thing I want to say is you're doing a fantastic job. I love everything that you say. You're spot on. You've made a big difference in my life, and I can see you're going to make a big difference in everybody's life. Thank you so much for everything you do. And I appreciate all of you guys for the co-creation. May you guys all be blessed with what is best. Stay the course and continue to create. But go anywhere and do it. All right. Love you guys, and I'll see you guys next week.